hospitalized. At least a dozen survivors are recovering from amputations, including a young woman, uh, a young woman named Adrian Haslett Davis. The, the second explosion destroyed her left foot. Doctors had to amputate her leg about four or five inches below the knee. Adrienne is a dance instructor, and she says dancing is her life, and she can't imagine not being able to dance. I met her in the hospital yesterday. She says she will dance again. She is determined to do that, and she is getting started right away. Tonight, we want to play you more of my interview with Adrienne. It starts with her telling what she and her husband, Air Force Captain Adam Davis, who was also wounded, did to save themselves just after the explosion. I crawled on my elbows, uh to try and get into the, one of the nearest businesses, I believe it was Forum, I could be wrong on the name, um, and I looked at a couple of people and looked up and said, can you help me, can you help me, and I was just covered in blood, and a couple of people were just in a state of shock and just looked at me like, oh my gosh, and ran the other direction. Um, I don't believe that they were Ill, ill-intended, I just think they were just in shock. Uh, and then I grabbed the door open with my elbow and crawled into Forum, uh, dragging blood and, and asked a couple of people for help and finally received it. How long were you there for? Um, we were there, it's, it seems like forever. I mean, timing could have flown or could have gone straight. It, I, my guess would have been five to ten minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe ten to fifteen. It's hard to tell when it, it seems like yeah. it crawls by. Um, we definitely had some people there and I just kept saying tighter and tighter and the pain was unbearable. I was asking for whiskey. I was yelling at people and asking for whiskey or vodka because we were in a bar and I thought... Is that the real reason you crawled into the bar? <laughs> yes, it is, actually. It was, I just thought, well, I may as well get a drink now. Did, this, did this people is, bring you whiskey? It. No, they didn't. Okay. They Likewise. didn't. But I thought, you know, this is going to be a long process. I knew that there were bombs going off. I, I didn't know if there were more. I didn't hear them, but I wasn't paying attention. I didn't know if there were more. I thought... I'm going to be here for forever. We're going to be here hurt forever and losing all this blood because it was the middle of a marathon. It would, there were bombs going off. There were probably hundreds of thousands of people hurt, and I didn't think that they would get to us as fast as they did. And before we knew it, a doctor came pushing his way through the crowd who was just dressed in civilian clothes and said, I'm a doctor, I'm a doctor. And he immediately tied the tourniquets tight enough that I lost feeling in my leg, which I was so thankful for. Tying those tourniquets on the scene in that bar, I mean, that probably saved you. It probably did, yeah. I would love to find those guys that were there that helped. Um, I'm thankful for Adam for helping, obviously. I've, I've thanked him a lot, but I'd love to find those other people that I can say thank you to. You don't well. know who they were? No, I'm not sure. Just good Samaritans. Yeah. At what point, I know you, your mom came, your mm-hmm. mom and dad, yeah. and um, you woke up. Yeah. It's the next day. They were there the next day when I woke up. When I went into the surgery, I still thought that they could save my foot. I could move my toes. I could feel them touching my toes. I, and they said, wiggle your toe. Do you feel your foot? I could still do it. So I thought that in my in my forever optimism and, and <laughs> thinking positive that I would still have my foot and woke up and, and I didn't. Do you still feel it? I do. Um, not right the second, but I, I do. When I have a sheet over it, I can feel that feeling of the sheet on top of your toes. I still have phantom itch, which is weird. Um, because you can't, you can't scratch it. You're determined to, to dance again, though. I am. What's your favorite dance? That's hard to, hard to say. That's like saying what your favorite song is. It's like, on Sunday mornings, I want, like, a waltz or a foxtrot or something slower, but on Saturday nights, I want, like, a cha-cha or a mambo or... Depends. I, I do them all, so... What's the first dance you want to do? Beanie's Waltz. Beanie's Waltz. Yeah. It's one of the tougher ones, but it's, it's <laughs> fast and it's beautiful and it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful dance. How are you coping with this new reality? Um, you know, it's, it's minute by minute. I'm overall, I'm excited for the challenge. I look at this as someone trying to stop me from realizing my dreams and I thought that ballroom dancing was something that I was never going to do. In dance, it just seemed like it was a tough arena to be in, and I've conquered that, and um, I'm, I'm not ready to stop. And so I feel like somebody has come along and said, oh, we're not going to let you do that anymore, and now I can, I'm going to prove them wrong. So I, I take it day by day. I think it's, I have moments where I just throw water bottles across the room and throw my walker and and just get angry and mad that someone did this to me and someone did this to Adam and and that I won't be able to have the same dancing and the same 
movements that I had before and dressing takes longer and showers take longer and um, I get angry. I definitely get angry, but I, I try and stay on the positive side. She's an amazing young woman. A website has been set up to help Adrienne achieve her dream. She's going to need uh, uh, prosthetic devices. They're very expensive. You can find out how to help her as well as many others in need in Boston on our website at ac360.com.